In the last video, we had seen a very shallow neural network which had just one extra layer. We called it hidden layer. We will see some more uh, notation, some more representation in this video. So we had seen this diagram in our earlier video. These are the inputs. This is the output and this is one extra layer. So if you compare it with logistic regression, we did not have this layer. We had just inputs and we had one circle which represented the calculation of uh, output based on these inputs and weights. So here in a neural network case, we call this as the input layer and uh, it's not a surprise since uh, this layer contains all the input uh, parameters and also the bias and this second layer we call it hidden layer and uh, the final layer is called output layer. So in this case you see it's just one circle so this is there is just one unit in this output layer and why is this called hidden layer uh, because uh, if you are doing some supervised learning training so in the training set you will have input and output so you can see the input and output but this uh, what's happening to this is uh, not visible to you so that's why in hidden layer and now uh, we had added some more notation where we denoted some square bracket like we called the output of these as activation and we called it one so this denoted activation corresponding to first layer and uh, by convention this is called a two layer neural network although you can see that there are three layers input hidden and output but uh, this input layer is not considered as a layer and uh, hidden and output layers are only considered in some of the research papers and literatures so we will call it two layer hidden layer two layer neural network and uh, activation of this is called a2 which is also the final output and uh, in order to denote these individual neurons in the case of logistic regression we had just one circle so we did not need to distinguish between different neurons in a given layer but here we have multiple neurons in a single layer so we will call it a1 since this belongs to the first layer and then subscript one so that means first neuron of first layer so this is the activation of that and then we will call it a2 and again one since it's also for the first layer a3 and a4 so this a is a 4 cross 1 vector so this a1 denotes a11 all the way up to a41 so this is the activation of first layer and here we called it capital X vector the inputs so we can also call it as a0 activation of layer 0 so in that way it, you can see it as a three layer if you call it layer 0 and uh, then uh, we have weights associated with this so you see that uh, from this input x there are four arrows going one to each of the units in next layer so this layer has four units this layer has three units so there are three cross four values in total for each of these we have four weights so this will be w1 or w11 this will be w21 and so on similarly it will also have four it will also have four so in total we will have uh, 12 such weights between one layer so it's uh, we will call it w1 that is weights associated with first layer we will not call it weights associated with previous layer but to which it's going these are uh, controlling the activations of this layer so we will associate these weights to first layer and this will be a 4 cross 3 matrix one for each of these lines and we will also have a bias which will be 4 cross 1 so because bias there will be one unit and it will go to all of these just once so it will be 4 cross 1 and the weight matrix will be 4 cross 3 similarly if you look at here we will call it 
the activation of unit 2, layer 2, and we can call it A2. And there is no need for subscript here since there is only one. And its weight we will call it W2. So how many of these are there? Four arrows are coming. Between these two layers, just four arrows are there. So its dimension will be 1 cross 4. And bias will be 1 cross 1. Since there will be one bias term and it will come here. And uh, this uh, Y hat we can use interchangeably with the activation of last layer. So uh, these were, were some of the more representation notations associated with neural network. In future lessons, we will look at more details and uh, we will see how these values are being calculated, how we feed in it input and how uh, the different layers are ultimately calculating the out output values. And further later, we will see uh, deep neural networks where we have multiple of such hidden layers. Here we have just one hidden layer, so we can call it a shallow neural network since it's not very deep. But once we add few of these, we call it deep neural network. And we can think of this as entire, as one black box kind of stuff, input coming in, output going, output coming out of this box. And in between there are multiples of hidden layers.